This your baby, skill baby. And I just jumped off the porch with dirty glove. You feel me, bastard? I get in my car to bless my insta with a freestyle. Walk him down, this a layup. Don't need no rebound. All effects, sister. All right, so we got Skilla Baby jumping off the porch with us today. What up, dog? How you feeling today, bro? I'm chilling for real, for real. Ah, that's what's up, man. I appreciate you coming by today, too, man. Appreciate y'all for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. Go ahead and introduce who you got sitting behind you today, man. I got gang, whole 50 zone, curse life, everybody with me, you know. Okay. Uh, this Scoop, this Big Bro Coat, this Lost, this K Man. You feel me? Nah, that's what's good, man. You know, I keep real street niggas with me. For sure. So, what do you got shaking here in Atlanta, man? What else you been working on since you touched down? I really wasn't trying to be a rapper when I came to Atlanta this time. I was just trying to, we was having a gangster party, so really? know, I like all the gangster festivities. <laughs> How do you like the vibes here in Atlanta then compared to back at home in the D? I really like Atlanta. I don't come here a lot, but when I do, I like to enjoy myself. Yeah. I have fun every time I come. Okay. So how you feeling about 2022, man? It's a brand new year, man. I feel like me and everybody around me going to get rich as hell. That's just how I feel about 2022. Yeah. More money in my hoes, my life. You know? <clears throat> nah, you've been going up every year, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you just keep that progression going, man. You're going to hit them goals for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So what part of Detroit are you from? I'm from the west side. Okay. Everybody think I'm from the east side, though. I'm from the west side. So for real. <laughs> Why do they think you're from the east side, then? Because everybody I hang with really from the east side. I got, like, west side friends and shit, but... I like the East Side really adopted me for real, for real. Hmm. How long has it been since they like kind of showed you that love, embraced you, and <laughs> kind of like you said, adopted you? Then it's been like four, five years. Damn okay, five years since I've been going to the East Side real heavy. Yeah, is there much of a difference between the East Side and the West Side, or is it all just Detroit, man? Yeah, it's it's a difference, but like I don't want to get into that all that East Side West Side different stuff. It's a difference. I love both sides, though. Yeah. It's people I don't fuck with and people I fuck with on both sides of the East and West. I got you, man. <laughs> so what's been going on in Detroit lately, man? I feel like Detroit being like, I feel like Detroit, like how Atlanta is right now, Detroit coming like a mecca for like hip hop. Like, I feel like that's what's going on. Everybody been getting better. Everybody been blowing up. So I really like Detroit right now. Everybody be trying to like, be like, they want to move, but I don't really want to move. Really? I love my city. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you'll outgrow the city then? Like you would have to move at some point or? No, cause I really don't. I'm not really too keen like to fucking with out of town people. Cause I'm so familiar with where I'm from. And I think like, I just think like everybody get their style from us for real, for real. So I just feel like. Everybody else weird to me. <laughs> now, Detroit definitely got that culture, man. That's definitely spreading throughout the U.S., man. That's how I just feel, though. Yeah, definitely, man. When I go out of town, I feel like a lot of, not everybody, but a lot of people I meet out of town be weird to me. Like, I don't really, like, I like, that's why I always be with people from my city. Like, yeah. the people out of my court, my family. Like, I'm with the realest niggas ever, so. Yeah. Like, Does like Atlanta and LA that they show you a lot of love when you touch down there? Really, like when I go to Cali, I get like I get a lot of love in Cali more than I expect. Yeah, like, I don't really come to Atlanta a lot, so I don't be knowing what be going on here. Who know me? But when I go to Cali, it's like I jump out the car, and people like, damn, that skill is. So I be like, yeah, that'd be cool. Cali be cool. That's always a good time. Was that easy for you to get adjusted to? Like people recognize you. You know, while out of public, especially out of town, too, man. Cause, yeah. you know, expect people to recognize you in Detroit, but out of town, like. Yeah, that. sometimes I'll be like, it'd be throwing me off, because it'd be like, like, you don't never know if people, like, because where I'm from, people be, like, off into all type of shit. So when somebody run up on you, you'd be like, what's going on? You feel mm -hmm. me? You'd be really on the defensive side, but I learned to take it in. Like, I really enjoy that shit. Yeah. So you open to taking pics with fans and all yeah, that? Yeah, always. I ain't never going to tell nobody, no, unless we busy or something. Yeah. Nah, that's love right there, man. All right, so growing up in Detroit, what were you into as a kid? I was really, like, in the sports and shit. I, I was in the sports real early. But yeah. then, like, 
when I was like 14, 15, I started trying to get off in the street shit and shit, and that shit was like normal. It's a normal nigga story. A lot of niggas played sports. A lot of niggas jumped off the porch early, so you know how that be. Yeah. What were you playing, basketball or what? I played basketball and football. Okay. You still hoop today? I, I bust niggas' ass from time to time, <laughs> for sure. You be hooping a lot with Sada? Yeah. No, that's what's up, man. So what would you say has been like one of the biggest life lessons you had to learn while being out in the streets? Uh? While being in the street? Uh, you can't, you got to believe half of what you see and nothing what you hear. There's a lot of shit going on. You just got to be like real attentive. Yeah. Like, now that's true, man. So how'd you get into making music? How old were you at first? I like 15. Okay. I really just, I always listen to music, but then one day I just went to the studio and I always like, everybody in they, like where I'm from in like Detroit, everybody grew up freestyling in a house and doing shit like that. Like Lil Wayne, you would look up a Lil Wayne instrumental and freestyle and shit. But then one day I went to the studio and it just, I fell in love with it. Really, that first time you hit it? Yeah, because like, I ain't gonna say I made the best songs ever, but I just felt like I did good for my age. Like, nah. Yeah, so besides Wayne, who else, who else were you listening to while you were growing up then? I listened to everybody. I don't just listen to rap music, but if it was like rap, I grew up listening to like Wayne, I grew up listening to Meek Mill, shit like that. I, I grew up listening to everybody though, like, I always been around older people, so I'm listening to all everything they listen to. Tupac, Biggie, everybody like Hot Boys, everybody. I'm listening to everybody. Yeah. Lucy, Webby, Jeezy. Like where I'm from, Jeezy was big when I was growing up. Like. Yeah, he was represented for the D Heavy yeah. too back in the day, man. Everybody in the city really fuck with Jeezy for yeah. real. Gucci, everybody. So when would you say you started taking a serious figure out, all right, I'm pretty good at this shit. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to pursue then. Probably like <clears throat> in the last year, I felt like in the last year, like my life, I really opened my eyes up to like really last two years. I'm like, damn, I'm really traveling the world. <laughs> like <clears throat> doing music. Like, damn. This shit kind of cool, so the last couple of years. Right. Yeah. And you used to go by just Skills, right? Mm hmm So how'd you get that name Skills at first? And skills came from basketball. Really? My coach, I was little as hell. I, I wasn't supposed to be on the team, so I, <clears throat> I came to my coach like, it was a third through fifth grade team. I was in second grade. He like, no, you can't play. I'm like, coach, I got skills. So then that let, let me come to practice. I was busting all the older niggas ass. So he just let me play. Then we had nickname day because we had to put the names on the back of the jerseys and the shirts and shit. So then he just said skills. And then that shit just followed me. I don't know how. I started playing pal football. Niggas started calling me skills. And then growing up, I just met everybody that was calling me skills. So, so then I kept it. Then you, when did you switch to the Skiller Baby then? Really, I was playing um, my last year pal. It was this girl named Taylor. She like, she just trying to be funny and shit, like calling me Skiller, like trying to be funny. And then I got to high school and I started rapping and Skills was like a name that you would see everybody with. So then one mixtape I just named that bitch Skiller Baby. Oh, and then I was just, so I don't be knowing how to explain how I got skilly. It's just like, <laughs> the girl just started calling me that. And I'm like, damn, that shit kind of catchy. So, fuck it. And that shit just stuck, huh? Yeah. And then, then it's ironic. I met Sada. And then it was Sada and Skilly. just shit crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of perfect, man. Mm -hmm. So how'd you link in with us, Sada at first? I really grew up with his brother. And then my big bro, Weez. That's like his man, so one day he just called, we just like tell skills, pull up on me. We pull up on him. It was me, it was him, it was a couple niggas in the house, but I really, <clears throat> it was him and Juan, our manager, so him and Big Bro, they was with each other and shit. 
They like getting a car. I don't know <laughs> why they told me to get a car, but they just got in the car, started filling me out and shit, started talking to me and shit. And then one day, nigga, because back then, this is when I was like 18, 19. Back then, you feel me? I'm still trying to, I'm still like trying to find myself like what I really want to do. I didn't even know if I really wanted to rap. Like I was going through shit in life. So then one day I just whined like, Come with me, you feel me? I started staying with wine for a couple months. That nigga made sure I was straight, you feel me? Got me together. Made sure I had money in my pocket, all that type of shit, you feel me? And then I really got close to wine, like wild men. I got close to him before I really got close to Sada. Like, it was, then I started getting real closer to Sada. And then it's just like, ever since then, it's just been, you feel me? Tight as hell. Did that kind of inspire you to really want to take the rap serious then? Yeah, because it'd be like, when somebody else believes in you, it's like, I can only help you help yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if I can't, I can't really, I'm not a person that, if somebody like invest their time in you, I ain't gonna waste their time, because they could be doing the other stuff. I hate when I invest my time into somebody or something and then, that's something I invest in, like, in me. They don't see that effort. Like, I want to see effort if I invest in you. So it's like, the least I could do is show somebody effort, you know? So what was like the first song that took off for you? Was it that mystical joint or did you already have a buzz before then? Or? Uh, a couple people knew me in the city, but it was really like Womack, this song, okay. Womack. It man, like I always, I always street niggas always listen to me. Like they like that little nigga can rap. You feel me? But when I drop well, make the hoes just start getting on me crazy. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Did you expect that one to take off like it did then, or? I liked the song. I ain't know it was gonna do as much as it did. I ain't know it was gonna be my first million view song. Yes, but I told Juan like I wanna shoot this. You feel me? He wanted to shoot something else. I'm like no. So I made everybody listen to it in the house. You feel me? And they like, yeah, shoot this one. And that one ended up being it. Yeah. For real. So uh, what was it like recording that Carmelo Bryant then? Uh, it's really regular song. Me in school always record like that. Like back and forth, that's our thing. We go back and forth all the time. Like, I think he got the hardest metaphors ever. He think I got some of the hardest metaphors ever. So we always go back and forth and try to compete, like yeah. who gonna say the hardest shit. So then we did that and that shit just ended up being sweet as hell. That's actually the first, second song I shot with him. Oh really? Yeah, hmm. the second song I shot with him. And then that shit ended up being sweet. So I'm like, yeah. You guys working on like a new collab project together or? Yeah, Billy and Boobop. That's the next one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Billy, my daddy name, and Boobop, his daddy name. Mm -hmm. So, you feel me? They both passed, so it's like, oh, you gonna drop that. That's gonna be hard, though, I ain't gonna lie. How far along are you guys right now? How many songs you got? We got a lot of songs. I don't know how many gonna go on there. We might make some new songs and put it on there. We got like damn near 100 songs together, though. Oh, shit. We didn't did like, we didn't had nights. We recorded twenty songs together. Like, True. So we got a lot of songs. It's just about the right ones going on there. Cause I uh, sometimes he like a song I don't like, or I like a song he don't like. So it's about us both coming together and liking what we put out. Cause I feel like whatever I do is how to gotta be that. Like he already that. I'm working on being that. So it can't be like nothing mediocre. Yeah. And kind of just speak on your relationship outside of music, man. Because we see, like, you guys are always together, man. Mm -hmm. He's, like, taking your NBA games and shit like that, too, it, man. It's like, it ain't, it ain't, real, that's, like, my real brother. So it ain't like, if I didn't do music, like, I met him for music, but if I didn't do music, I'd still fuck with bro. Like, if I stopped doing music today, we'd still, we play the game together, do all that. Like, you feel me? We go to games, NBA games, all type of shit. So, like. I was big on sports. I always went to Pistons game. He liked Pistons game, so we go together. Like shit, yeah. you feel me? Go hoop together, do everything. Yeah. That's bro, like you know. Real genuine shit, right? Yeah, there, cause I don't. Me and him, I don't feel like 
we would fuck with each other if we didn't have that personal relationship. Like I don't, like, I don't want to do business with nobody or really be around nobody that I don't genuinely fuck with. Like that ain't how I am. Like, yeah, it definitely won't last if you don't have that like, that bond yeah. in there. Like I gotta before we even start doing music, like we hung. Like you feel me? Why I brought me to his hood? You feel me? And you feel me? Like. Had everybody feel me out. I'm feeling everybody out. At first, like when I first came around, I didn't even talk for real, for real, like you know. And then, but everybody just accepted me, you know. And that's what it be like. You yeah. like these niggas, real niggas. And that's that's bigger than anything musically to me. Like a real genuine person. Yeah. So nah, that's absolutely. how that is. Yeah. So what's your creative process? You just be going off the top or do you write or? I do both. Yeah. Like some days, my best, my best work come when I write though. But a lot of stuff, hard stuff I do, I come off the top. Hmm. But it's like, I don't really have no set creative process. Like I used to get high. Now I don't even get high for real. So hmm. it's like, I might write all my shit at home, then come to the studio, lay it all out. Mostly, most time I, um, when I'm coming off the top, it's like when everybody in the studio and I just want to work fast. Yeah. But it's a lot of times I go to the studio by myself, nobody else, I don't let nobody come and I just work. Like, I think that's when I make my best work for real. Nah, I feel that. So what made you stop smoking? I really like, I got in trouble, but then I got on probation, but then I don't really drive me for weed, but I just start feeling like I do way better. Like I think clearer without weed and shit like that. I never really did like all type of other drugs. I didn't really do that type of shit. That wasn't me. Yeah. I really just smoked weed, but then after I got that shit out, I started feeling more healthy. So I'm like, I'm thinking more clear, get more money. All yeah. type of shit. Yeah, it'll definitely have you more focused, man. Cause yeah. I quit smoking a couple years too, and like. I always thought I would go back to it. I don't miss that shit at all, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so you got the new project, man, Me Vs. Me. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, just explain that title. Why did you choose that title for the project? I just feel like for a minute, I stopped being myself, not like in life, but like musically, I stopped being myself. So I just felt like a couple of years versus this year, Me Vs. Me, like the new shit that I'm doing, I just feel like that versus the old shit I'm doing, it's just gonna be way better, you know? Some people like the old shit and some people like the new shit, but I just feel like my music gonna be way better than this year. So I just titled it that. Yeah, kind of just talk about your growth as an artist when you first started rapping up until this new project then. Mm -hmm. I just be seeing more. Like, I go a lot of more places. I, I'm doing more. Like, I got a lot more responsibilities. So I just feel like I got a lot more to talk about. Yeah, so. yeah. I think Andre 3000 said that too. Like they couldn't drop music back to back until they actually like lived life mm -hmm. and had shit to rap about, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Facts. Right? Cause so you're you just, just going in there saying the same shit over and over different ways. Yeah, cause I, like where I'm from, you might see a hundred chargers, but it's only two, three, four ways you can say charge. But then I go <laughs> to real. Miami, you see all these Lambos, you feel me, McLaren's, all that type of shit. And you just, like naturally, you gonna put that shit in there, yeah. you know? Charger only sounds sweet a couple times, you know? You gotta start rapping about other stuff, seeing different people. Like, it's just all that type of shit. Yeah, no, that's real. So what videos you plan to shoot off of there? Mm, I shot Tay B style, um, scat pack music, I'm gonna do one more, but I don't know which one I'm gonna do yet. I'm probably let Los decide. I be let Los decide a lot of shit sometimes. Okay. Uh, like musically, cause Los would call me like, man, this bitch hard. So I just like, a lot of times I let him, you feel me, so. Uh, who were some thing. of the producers you worked with on that project? It was mostly Josh, okay. um, JC. In my age, AC, I grew up with him. So a lot of, we got this chemistry. So a lot of my shit be hard as hell off his beats. Um, yeah, it's a couple other people on there. Um, Tyreek, 
um, young boy, it's a young nigga. I just met Tyreek. He called, he on there. But it's mostly Josh, like 90% of the project guy. Yeah. And, and no right features, there. right? One feature is Sada. Oh, Sada's on there? Yeah. Okay. Bing bong. That yeah. song. <laughs> so, you still independent? Um, I'm under Big Squad, you feel me? They ain't make me do no um, paperwork, but I'm okay. basically Big Squad. I'm signing Big Squad. Um, why am I manager? We, um, we run the RG. I'm like the vice president of Big Squad, so it's like, it's damn that I pretty much feel like <clears throat> I'm independent, but it's like I'm under Big Squad, like I said. I'm, Whatever I'ma always be Big Squad. Whatever I whatever I do with anything, I'ma make sure Big Squad get you feel me. Whatever it is, a part of that. So that's just where I'm at with that. Um, wine and side of support, whatever decision I want to make. So, are you interested in signing with like a major? At first, I wouldn't though, like, cause I just be seeing so many people get fucked out of major labels. Yeah. I do, but I don't, like, I want to do it. This is why I ain't signed with no major label or no even label at all, because in time, first priority, and that's why I like, you feel me, being like Big Squad, independent, we're independent labels, because I'm, after Sada, I'm first priority. Like, everybody knows Sada gonna be first priority, but after that, even when Sada got something to do, I'm gonna make sure I got something to do, you know? So it's like, I could go to wherever bro at or anywhere else, but I'm not gonna be first priority. And I know that, cause I could tell how, when somebody talked to me, Yeah, I'm not gonna be first priority, you know? So until I make that, until I make a song or a project that just bust somebody ears open and they like, he gonna be first priority, I'm probably not gonna sign. Cause I really, I really don't need nobody money. like. It's a thousand ways and a thousand people gonna help me get some money. So it's really not that. I, I really need to be in on the platforms and the rooms. That's what I'm looking for from a label. Yeah. So if they don't give me that, I'm not signing. Nah, I get that. Cause it's like, you got everything, almost everything that a major got already, which mm -hmm. is uh, your support yeah. system behind you. You feel me? Yep. That's all we need is the, them, them platforms, you feel me? And, tip. and unless they give me like a life changer deal where I can change a hundred niggas' lives that's with me, I really don't want no deal, like for real, for real. 100, hundred, two hundred thousand can't do nothing for me. I'm gonna mm -hmm. blow that anyway, so it's just like. Yeah, you might as well just have like full control of your shit, facts. you know what I'm saying? Drop when you want to drop, and that's it, man. Definitely, man. So what, what, what are some of your goals like as an artist, man? Do you look to put other artists on in the future or? I really not, I'm not paying attention right to that right now because I can't help nobody until I help myself. Like, I can't really, I can't really say that that's one of my goals. I really want to be, get Grammys and awards and be on BT awards and shit like that. I really don't mm, like, I'm trying to be one of them artists that make the fourth list. Like, I want to be one of them type of artists. Like, that when you hear me, that shit just change your life. I'm trying to change people's lives when they hear me. So, I'm really not paying attention to like trying to sign somebody and get money out of them and shit like that. Like, yeah. I can't help nobody yet. I ain't even did the best that I can do. So, I can't even tell you that. Nah, I feel that, man. What's well, been one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome in your life so far to be able to make it here today, sit on this porch, right? Uh, the biggest obstacle I probably went through was like transitioning and like really accepting that I'm not yet like a, a super kid no more. Like I got bigger responsibilities and, and people depended on me. So that was like one of the biggest obstacles, like, uh, yeah, that was probably the biggest obstacle, like transitioning from like, from like that's little Skiller to like, like Skiller really got something going on, you know? So that was like the biggest obstacle for me, like accepting that. Yep. Like I always, like just little shit, like putting on clothes, like I didn't even want to buy clothes and shit like that. Like 
why I had to make me get this shit. So <laughs> it's like just accepting shit like that. Like I gotta get dressed every day and I can't wear the same thing, like shit like that. That shit accepting that was like the biggest obstacle for real. Yeah, you gotta have that image. Yeah, and then like the other biggest obstacle is like I don't like being fake. A lot of this shit be fake, like with the rap shit. So I gotta learn. I had to learn to like bite my tongue a little bit and like accept certain shit, and that'd be like an obstacle for me. Nah, definitely, man. So what's next for your skiller, man? What What do you got on tap for 2022, man? I'm probably I'm probably trying to drop like three, four projects, and I really want to get rich as hell this year, like super rich, like like generational wealthy, like that's what I got planned for 2022. Like more cribs, more land, uh, more cars. Uh, I'm trying to buy everything with my niggas, like buy everything. Like, I'm trying to buy all the land up, like so nobody else can't get it but us. <laughs> I feel that, man. All right, Skill, you got a shout out you'd like to give before we wrap it up here, man? Mm -hmm. Shout out Big Squad, shout out 50 Zone, shout out my mama, shout out my sister, shout out my new dog I just got, you feel me, Denim, you feel me, shout out Dirty Gloves, you feel me, shout out Walk the Porch, it's on the floor, it's Skilly, baby, you know. I get in my car to bless my ass through with a freestyle Walk him down, this a layup, don't need no rebound All effects, since a little nigga, this tape be style My 